Back in the game, hello from Sao Paulo, Brazil. And hey, listen, I want to give a big shout out, as always, to Kenna, because she's like everybody's number one cheerleader for popping in early and hopefully sharing this on her Facebook. Uh, Ezra, definitely big shout out. Thanks for popping in. Both of you, make sure, and everybody watching, that's an important thing. And I know you hear it everywhere, but I'll tell you why it's important, especially here with us. My channel focuses on three things. So if today isn't your cup of tea, you should still subscribe because I talk a little bit about my financial, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, investments, credit, things like that. Another third, we talk about world travel, um, not just my life here in Brazil. I've lived in over 15 countries, but I have friends all over the world that come in and talk about their experiences. And then you get days like today, we talk about things that might be a little bit of everything, or what I like to call social issues, where we discuss what's relevant, and I bring in some of my, some of my diverse friends to talk about the issues at hand, the importance. This is a place where everyone can leave a comment. We all speak respectfully and have a good time, but it's critically important that you click the subscribe button and the thumbs up and the bell. Uh, I'm old enough to remember when you didn't need to do all that, but click subscribe at the very least and share this somewhere on social media because first, thank you to everybody who's been helping this channel grow. Um, we've been doing amazing and sharing this, people sharing this among their friends has been the largest reason why. I uh, wanna go, hey, Jeff Johnson from the DMV. You know, uh, when I was a kid, I thought everybody lived at the Department of Motor Vehicles. I'm totally Jimmy serious. I'm, Johnson from the DMV. I am 100%. You know, uh, when I was a kid, I thought, and let's see. So yeah, I actually thought the DMV was Department of Motor Vehicles and a lot of people lived there or lived near there because I had no idea what it meant. So, <clears throat> hey, Kenna. Kenna is a hustler. Kenna's always into something. Um, and let's see. For the people who are just tuning in, I don't know if you got to see the subject matter at hand because it's a little bit more than I could fit in a subject title in line. It's how to legally work in Brazil and why. But I want to be clear. This could apply to more than just Brazil. I'm using Brazil as an example, and I want to give you an example because everything that I talk to you about, a lot of it has come from people who have privately hired me or contracted with me to teach them certain things. And without giving away the shop, I, I always want to show people <clears throat> the receipts and why certain people come to me. I want to show you this. See this? This is República Federativa do Brasil, Ministerio do Trabalho, Secretaria de Políticas de Emprego e Salario. Important part at the bottom, here it comes. Cartera de Trabalho e Trabalho e Previdencia Social. Basically, that's a work permit. That means legally, I can work anywhere in the country of Brazil with no problem. But some of you might say, but Watif, you're an entrepreneur. Haven't you spent all that time in the United States working as a financial professional and learning how to put money away and how to manage your own business so that you don't have to work for anyone else? So that you can just be 100% on your own? My answer is, and this is where I want to get feedback from you guys. See, you're right, kind of. The entire point of being an entrepreneur is to be able to make money where you can, when you can, how you choose to, and without compromise. But I want to be the first to tell you, I often get contracted by some great companies and organizations and institutes, both in Brazil and abroad. Why? Because I'm open to making that money. And one of the things that has helped me make more money in Brazil than a lot of my friends who live here is I took the time. Let me clap this one out for you. I took the time to take the paperwork and the patience seriously so that when a serious company said, we want to hire you for a period of time or hire you part time a few hours a week, we can do so legally and in a tax advantageous method. Now, let me back up. BMT who's out, uh, he's actually exercising right now. We just had a great conversation. Some of you who know me on my social media know I post exercise and I also post when I go get my checkups and I show people um, what my checkup situation is like. Before BMT, even, before BMT even gets the microphone, I wanna show you, let's see. I wanna show you who he is and what he does because the cool thing about YouTube is that everybody can be friends with everybody 
and it doesn't take anything away from you. It, it doesn't take anything away from me to show you another phenomenal channel that may bring the message to you differently. He may bring the message to you differently, but in a way that you take better than you take it from me. That's okay. I tell everybody to subscribe for one month, and if you don't like it, unsubscribe. But I've only had two people unsubscribe. So I'm going to show you this first. BMT, Black Male Talk. He talks about a lot of things that are a lot deeper than you could possibly understand. I mean, he goes into areas that, quite frankly, most people are afraid to delve into. But he does it openly, honestly. He talks about his wins, and he talks about his losses. That's why he and I get along. We show you that to win the game, it's not like they show you on television. To get where you want to be, there's some hustle involved. And he's not afraid to have difficult discussions, and he can have them respectfully. I endorse him to go on your channel, and he's always welcome on mine. Did I, did I do you justice, BMT? Did, did that, yes, did that you get did. shot? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> uh, I guess one of my biggest things that I do is I build, I build homes, uh, like one of these. What you're looking at is, like, I... I could turn it into a full-on home. Uh, this is just a sneak clue, a sneak preview. Build these for the government. Can y'all see me? And I see. Boom. Can y'all see me? Is that any better? Because he seems to have frozen. Is that any better? Okay. How about now? Can y'all see me now? Yeah. So we take pretty much sheds and turn them into full-on houses. That's pretty much what I do. I can take now, anything. Do you work for yourself? Huh? Do you work for yourself? Yeah, I work for myself. But do you often take contracts from other people? Would you work for somebody else if they gave you the right price? Correct. Yes, I would. I take, yeah, that's part of being a contractor. Uh, we do this. We take contracts for government. We build full-on houses and everything. Uh, right now is pretty much my season of rest. I can afford to do that. I work for myself, and I take on full-on houses where people say, "Hey, I want to get the hell away from the world." This place right here, uh, one bedroom, full-on bathroom. It's about eight fifty. That's how much it costs for to rent one of these out, fully furnished. I build these. It's pretty much easy. Like, only if it don't take too long. Well, let's be clear. It's easy to you because you know how to do it. Fair enough. Fair. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Yusef. It is easy to me. We're probably because my family, this is our craft in, in building these types of things. Um, we do these. So here's my, but here's where I want to go with this, right? I know people in construction that have operations much bigger than yours that have fallen because they try to do things off the books under the table. Can you tell us, have you seen that happen? People who not just abroad, but even in the United States don't want to work legally? Yes, quite often. And um, they're bad for business. I don't, usually when I find out that they're blacklisting or they're, they're like hiring workers, like, hey, does he have a certificate? Does he have a contract? Is he allowed to touch that type of machinery? Um, we have to let them, I, I have to like let them go because they're liability. Also, and knowing that they're doing that, that also looks bad on me because if different stuff from ICE, DACA, or definitely OSHA come down, whoever is tangled up with them, all our accounts get frozen. So you have to definitely be careful with that kind of stuff. I know it says, well, we're saving money, we're doing this, but you're taking a gamble, especially in this day and time, but when you're cheating, and uh, if say let's say a guy's on there on your fit on your work on your work site, he gets hurt. Guess what? You're liable. You now you're liable to get sued because you're supposed to have known. Hey, you're, first of all, you're supposed to be doing a roll call. All your supervisors supposed to say like, wait, why was that guy on the forklift? He caused that incident that probably caused that person to get hurt. And you, but they're always gonna go for the head of the dragon first. They don't go for the toenail. They go for the head of the dragon. And I'm telling you right now, I've seen one guy, he was at the top of the world, pulling in at least about $5 million a year. One incident, two workers, um, they literally caused a pipe that you put down in the ground, rolled over, broke a man's leg, lost everything. 
couldn't get couldn't get a contract, couldn't get touched because those kind of things make it you're the liability now. You're bringing li- unli- unliable people onto your site. That means the work now gets to get called into question where other people say, yo, you worked on my stuff and this messed up. So now other people get to backtrack and come after you. This is yep. a really big thing that happens to a lot of companies that, 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 dropped them, that dropped them deep. Well, here's what I would actually say. A lot of people understand that, that my company, I do editing, copy editing, proofreading, and I work with a lot of international companies. And I do have competition, not just in Brazil, but in other places. And what I'm going to do is show you guys uh, what I do while I explain it to you. And I have people who have talked to me about ways they've done business that they found kind of ways around the government and ways around the system. But here's what I tell them that I can do that they can't. I can go to a client and say, I am certified to legally work in your company. That means I've been background checked. I've been verified. That means you can trust me with encrypted files. That means you can trust me with files that are sensitive in nature because I am established here. It also allows me to charge more. Because I tell them, you're, you, could, you, you could arguably hire someone far cheaper than I am, but if you're hiring someone who is a, a foreigner who's fluent in, let's say you're French or Russian or American like me, who's working in your country, you cannot take the chance that that person takes your data and runs, or even worse, sells it to your competition. You see what I do here, editor, uh, resume writer, ghost writer, English, uh, English expert for people who need, uh, people who do public presentation. But here's, here's the interesting part, by the way. This has nothing to do with this. I don't know what's going on in the United States right now, but I have over the past three or four months been getting a flood of people hiring me to rewrite resumes for them. I don't know if people are losing their jobs at a higher rate, but I have just been landslided with people contacting me here through email. Hey, what's your PayPal? I need a resume next week. I don't know what's going on if anybody can verify that. Now, here's the other thing that I would always say you should do. When you work legally, you can publicly talk about your clients. And a lot of people underestimate the power of a quality referral. I tell everybody, listen, if you want to know who, who I am, look me up on LinkedIn. It's my real name. But skip the resume part or look at that last. Look at the recommendations. You see, these are business professionals who hired me legally that can go on record and say, yes, this guy is everything he claims to be. Yes, this guy is trustworthy. And I tell my clients all the time, go through, read what other people have said about me, make your business judgment from there. You can't do that when you're working off books, especially in another country like Brazil, where, you know, people have this weird image that Brazil is a place where you can get away with anything. And I don't know where that image came from, because if you get jammed up out here, you got real problems. Lawrence, you've been sitting there just just mean mugging us the whole time. I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait for your turn. Uh, for your turn. Do you know how long me and BMT can go back and forth before you get a turn? Yeah. Well, I guess working under the table from a different Hold on, hold on. Your your microphone, it's kinda are you using the standard mic on your on, on where you're talking or do you have some kind of microphone plugged in? Do you have here's what you did last time. You had your Bluetooth still plugged in, and you didn't know it. Remember that? Do I sound any better now? No. A little bit, but is your Bluetooth plugged in? Because it sounds like your your microphone may be someplace else. I don't know what's going on with you and your technology, my friend. Do you just go to Walmart and buy the cheapest phones you can possibly find? Are you are you talking to us on a burner phone right now? Which one? What's that one? Uh, this the word of uh, the power. They got train sets. Go back, go back. I don't know what's going on with them. But what 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 uh, Sister Kenna said? Business insurance definitely helps. But the problem is, she also pointed out, business insurance only helps if you didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. You are wrong and you expose someone's data. You got problems. And the reason I talk about it as being an expat and entrepreneur and working as an American 
uh, who's working towards becoming Brazilian is you don't have as many chances to take as a local. Remember, someone born in this country gets a lot of goodwill, and this is not just true of Brazil. Locals will get more goodwill and more chances than a foreigner will. So when you come to another country, Brazil or anything else, and you don't have your documentation, you're screwed. I don't know if he can see this, Kenna, but I'm gonna put that up for, for him. Uh, Lawrence, Kenna said you sound muffled. Can you use a regular headset? Oh, it looks like Kenna predicted the future. Hold on. Lawrence? I don't know what Lawrence is doing. Um, let me say this. One of the things about it is when you, um, like in getting into business, you have to get, um, you have to go get, uh, insurance when you, depending on what you're doing. Like for me, I have to get insurance to cover me and my type of interest. Because usually when you get your license, they ask you, so what are you getting into? What do you, so you have to go get insurance for those coverage. If you're working under the table, and I want a lot of y'all to understand this, you're not covered. You're kind of out on your own. And so they let you know, for a lot of people who work under the table, hey, like, I want you to know there's no extra additives or benefits to this. So if anything happens to you, you get sick, you get Hephaestus poisoning, you catch, you, you catch anything or you get hurt on the job, you're on your own. This is why I always strongly tell a lot of people, hey, man, be careful with working under the table. I get it. Yes, you might have some legal issues, but there are jobs that are willing to work. Like, I know I helped a few guys get into tractor trailer driving, uh, get into construction, get into working on the train tracks. Those are really good paying jobs. Um, transportation. There's a lot of jobs that will hire people, even if they have um, not the most cleanest background but they can work with you or help your credit. Yes, even with your credit, some jobs won't allow you and you'll say, well, hell with it. I'm still going to do that. Don't, it's not worth it. It's just, it's just not worth, it's just not worth your freedom or worth your life or worth any kind of- um, well, I'll even go farther. It's not worth your reputation because the only thing a man ever has is his name. You yes, can lose like, businesses, you can lose money and come to your clients and have to talk about reconstitute. You can do a whole lot of things, but once you are no longer trustworthy, once your name is dirt, there's somebody out there who's willing to take your spot. I, I, think, uh, I think Ezra just subscribed to you. He said, at BMT Props, man, your work is nice. Thank you. Thank you. And um, Ezra also said about Brazil, it comes from the belief that there are no laws in Brazil. Too many people believe Brazil is just drugs and prostitutes, which that's is- not true. Which is a weird thing. I don't know where people get that idea from because that's like every major city in the world is drugs and prostitutes. For some reason, they think that, well, it's different there. No, it's just like New York City or L.A. or Shanghai. If you want to do something good, you got plenty of opportunities. If you want to do something bad, you got opportunities. But when you come out here, people don't understand. And Ezra can testify, Brazil is a conservative country in many aspects. A lot mm -hmm. of people don't understand Brazil is not a wild place. But see, that's the thing about like they all show you that people okay. people like to show you narratives of, hey, look what I did with uh brother Youssef. Mind you, one of the most telling things that you showcased Youssef was you could showcase your clientele and say, hey, look, I got satisfied customers. When you're working under the table, you holistically can't do that because if you get caught. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If something goes wrong, they can come after you. You're not covered. And that's the thing about it. A lot of people don't understand what a lot of these companies that made that, listen, paperwork catches up to you eventually. Always. Mm. Mm. Paperwork will always, I, listen, I've been doing it for a long time. Paperwork catches up with you always. And it always wears you down. You have to be very mindful of your paperwork. Uh, when you start saying, I'm going to cut around the, uh, legally, um, illegally, you know, I'm going to start cutting corners. I'm not going to file taxes. Don't do that. I had one guy, he was going two years without filing taxes. That wasn't good. A lot of people, and I want to be clear, I am not a tax professional. Let me say this again. I'm about to say something. I am not a tax professional. But what a lot of people don't know is you can write to the IRS and say, listen, I messed up. 
I didn't file taxes last year, maybe even the year before that. Here's my situation. What can we do to rectify this? And a lot of people don't understand is confession is better than getting caught. Yes. Let me say that again. Confession is better than getting caught. You know who I'm going to have to bring back in? I'm going to have to bring Mr. Ashley back in because, let's see. That would be that would be good because that's that has happened plenty of times. I can't tell you how many times from um, companies or people just starting up whereas to they know somebody, you know what I'm saying, they know a cousin or somebody who can do Rather than going to get the legal professional help, yep. somebody who actually knows what they're doing, I know somebody, somebody who can do this and get us yep. extra money. Uh, Talk to yeah. Ashley. Ashley, the attorney, came in, rescued us from the tax man. She came in and also look at we 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 gotta we gotta bring Alenda back on because she's good at talking about these things as well. But the information is out there. The information is out there if you want it. Or my personal favorite that I've seen happen in place, Lawrence, you've got your headset on. I'm guessing the dirtle running on a wheel that powers your call, your cell phone or your computer. Um, <laughs> I've been fed. How does my how do I sound now? Good. What were you doing wrong before? Uh, well now it's plugged in. I was trying to use the Bluetooth connection to my headphones, but now they're mm. plugged in. So next time just listen to Kenna. Can you use a regular <laughs> headset? Just don't be fancy. Huh. So I'm going to give you a chance to catch up. What were you saying? Because oh. you, you didn't... Well, what I was, was going to say is uh, it sounds like you two are both business owners, and I, I guess I would be considered a 1099 employee for, so I pay my own taxes and that kind of thing. And there's certain business implications that you can take advantage of if you buy yourself as a separate business entity. So, you know, I'm, I'm into the retail arbitrage online, and I do uh, mystery shopping, and also I, you know, do some Uber driving here and there. So there, there are some significant tax benefits to filing, you know, to filing and becoming a regular business as opposed to working under the table. Here's something else I've seen that a lot of people don't, a lot of people don't seem to understand, and this is something that I've seen happen traveling with a lot of people. You come to a country, you do things under the table, but then you get established. You start doing things well. You decide you're not going to leave. You decide you want to become legal. Now you got to figure out how to go to the government and say, yeah, um, I can provide for myself. I can establish that I can earn an income so that you can allow me to live here as a, as a permanent resident, whatever it is, because you have to show that you can feed yourself. So they're going to say, oh, okay, well, you're probably a little young for retirement income. Do you have retirement coming? No. Okay, well, um, where's your money coming from? Well, I work for myself. And they say, oh, great. Just show me like your last couple of years income, you know, maybe some bank receipts. I don't know. I'm just guessing different governments do it different ways in different countries. Now you're in a situation where you can either say you don't have anything to show them you can support yourself or show them that you've been working in their country, not paying taxes off the books for years. Now you're, now you're kind of fucked. Yeah. Now you're kind of fine. You, I think, like I said, I, I, I get I get what you're saying, Lawrence. Like, listen, like, I'm a military disabled veteran. You understand? So I'm not going to just live off of just my government pension and my government and, and, all, and all that stuff. I'm not doing that. But you have to learn how, the thing about it, and this is something that hurts a lot of people, they don't know how to properly work the system. You know what I'm saying? And it's not that you're, you're not cheating. I, I hate when people say you're cheating the system when you know how to properly... Some people will spend $100 doing something that probably will only cost them $10. You know what I'm saying? Versus some people will step into the step and try to do stuff that other people say, well, you could have probably done that next to nothing for free if you just knew the proper people to go ask. And this is why... When I try to tell somebody like, man, I got to do what I got to do to get by. That's not necessarily true. Because see, when you're doing that, that means you're going to get desperate. That means you're going to get pinned in a corner versus you actually knowing what to do. That's not going to get you pinned into a corner, you know? So I understand. I understand what you're saying. And I'm like I said, I'm I, 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 like I said, I just now got on to making my second 
business soon enough to go into my third business. I tell people, go down by the city council building. Learn what's going on in your city. Learn the proper paperwork that's up for different dates. Certain stuff gets lowered down in price and taxes while other stuff will go up. But the thing is, you have to go look for the proper information. This is when this is when you're playing. This is what stuff. This is when people pay other people, which data is power. Information is power. Because when you know what you're doing, then you can't get caught up in certain stuff. That's why. So one of these things right here, like where I'm at right now. They hire certain contractors to work on this on these roads. To get hired onto this, usually you'll get paid at least about forty to sixty thousand dollars, right? What contractor doesn't want that? But the thing about it is knowing the proper channels on where to go to get this job, that's a different story. Now, one of the guys who did have it, I think four years ago, he was using illegal immigrants. Guess what immigrant. happened? He was getting extorted by somebody saying, yo. You're going to have to cut me off some of that money because your people that you're using are illegally working on state property. Now he was caught up in something versus he could have literally have hired people coming out of the halfway house, hired them. Maybe he had to probably pay them a little bit more, but he would have been more so covered. And also he probably would have gotten a grant from the state for hiring people coming out of the halfway house, keeping them off the street. You get what I'm saying? There's certain stuff that we got to learn how to do to stay ahead of the system versus actually trying to cheat to go make that extra money. And then other people, and this is what gets a lot of people caught up trying to keep kind of cover their ass um, with a lot of businesses, schemes, Ponzi schemes, and the government has been cracking down on this stuff for quite a while now. Like, um, they've been cracking down. I and mean, every government, you may not have the proper bank bank account to keep them off your ass for only but so long. You know, what I'm, you get what I'm saying, guys? Like, you, it's, it's only a matter of time before everything catches up with you. You know? So you, how, did you get, how did you get your start into this government contracting thing? Did how did I get that? Or, yes. So how did I get into this? Well, I used to work for the military. Uh, and when I would see contractors, I would see civilians walking around the base. And I'm like, how the hell did you get here? And rather than just, I always tell people, watch people, listen to them, ask questions, ask questions. There's no such thing as a stupid question. If you don't, yeah. the only thing stupid is when you don't ask the question. And as they started telling me, I would always ask, well, what's your references of what you're doing? See, when they can tell you the references of where they got the information from and you can go check and verify it, come right back to them and keep on talking with them. So as they begin to tell me this stuff, when I knew I was getting out of the service, I started putting all that into action. So by the time I got out, everything verified and checked. And mind you, this took me at least about six to eight years. Six to eight years, I dedicated myself to this gathering information. Now, I work for myself. I've been working for myself for almost over seven years. I don't know what it's like to work for somebody anymore because I've been working so long by myself and it's like foreign to me. And it's like, I don't mind. Uh, me and Yusuf had, and um, Iori had a good conversation about trying to tell people how to get ahead. The, the, the information out there is just that it's gathering the proper people around your table for that support to tell you, hey, I, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, Lawrence. Let me help you out with this issue. And if I don't know, let me steer you towards Yusef and he can clean it up for you and actually get you get you right. Speaking of, you, know speaking of cleanup, you said something interesting, and then I want to give the mic to Lawrence again. What you said about the guy who was being extorted because he was doing things illegally to get uh, cheap workers from another country. Now, here's what's interesting. I read an article once about these two guys that quit the criminal lifestyle. And they went to a traditional African religion. I'm an atheist. I don't really know a whole lot about religions. But they said that the, the holy man in their area said, listen, we can let you in, but we cannot ignore the stuff you've done in the past. So you're going to have to do a full testimony, not incriminating yourself, but how people can avoid getting mixed up with criminals like the person that you used to be, which is interesting because they were professional con men. And the first part that they wrote, and they put it online, he said, listen, the first thing to remember is that you cannot con an honest man. Only men who are looking for a cheap, easy way out can be deceived because they are also complicit in their own deception. The other thing you realize is that when you do things legally, like you said, 
You can't extort someone who's doing business legally. You can't, can't be done. You can't extort Watif if I've already got all my legal documents in place for the business that I run. You can't go to somebody and say, hey, you need to do business with me. If not, I'm gonna go to the man and tell him that you've been working with this guy named Youssef Watif who is illegal. Power. That's power. That's real power. Lawrence. What's up? Oh, I just didn't know if you, I mean, uh, you, you pop in and you get, all, you get all set up with your microphone and you're dead silent on me. <laughs> no, I have nothing to add to what you just said. That was that was perfect. It's, it's not only just power, but it's also insurance because you can't, what are like this for a politician? What's one of the main things caught up? Illicit illegal activity. But the ones who are straightforward and honest about every move, well, we're coming about this. Well, you can't get me because I already came out about it a long time ago. Yeah. You can't come at me about this, but right. I've been there told everybody. It, it's, it's almost you're ensuring yourself that whatever somebody tries to get you caught up in or wrapped up in, right. they can't get you. So them coming out to me, I remember one time they came out to me about, hey, um, I was doing some work on a person's house and I guess somebody came out. I guess he was trying to get the the de- he was trying to get the contract towards that property and he said well we hear you got two people on here who used to be federal um federal convicts i said well they're out now they're I, they, they didn't escape they're working for me legally and he was like what's the problem i said well would you rather have honest men that are working an honest paycheck or would you have people here that are illegally stealing from you those two men are honestly working, pushing and doing work, and they're also getting certified on their um on welding and plumbing. What's the big deal? That's legal. There has been a lot of men that have gotten out of the out of incarceration, turned their life around and become millionaires. So mm. these men are doing honest work. Now they're gonna be self-employed people. Once they get their certification, they can go anywhere they want with those certifications. So in doing that, that not only helped me, but I also boost my reputation that BMT is taking people who are trying to turn their life around and giving them a chance to actually get a jump start. You know what that would actually cause? More people to want to work for me, more people that actually have businesses to say, hey, you know, I like I like what you're doing. You're helping our community move from crime to over to employing people. You see how I'm saying how that insured me and also covered me? That's stuff that that's stuff that's hard to come by with honest business practices. I'm not gonna say it's easy every day, but sometimes I know some people who have cheated me out of stuff. However, I do know every dog does have his day. That is for sure in the yeah. line of business. Every dog has his day. Trust to believe me. I've taken some L's on those things. Let me ask you a question that's, that's very specific to what you do, but it relates to a conversation I had uh, with a friend who also likes to pop on. Let's see, where is she? There we go. My friend Leticia lives in a tiny house. You know what a tiny house is? Yeah, I've seen one of those things. They're pretty compact. Is that something you've ever thought about doing business in? Because I know she and her community, they buy tiny houses. Can you tell the people watching what a tiny house is? Because you're a builder, you know more than I do. Um, It's pretty much so. It's they're pretty convenient where pretty, pretty much, I, I'm not going to lie. They're like, you got it. It's like, you pretty much can fit a whole house in one small space. Like they're very, um, the only people I've ever seen do those are like in like small towns, which are like their own miniature communities, except they don't have a store. I haven't seen them ever do a miniature store yet. But for the fact, like what you just saw right there, what you just saw me do, that would be almost close but that would almost be close to a tiny house because mm. literally everything is right in there. Except I'm pretty sure half of that would have been her house. Half of that would have been her house. Um, they're usually one bedrooms. They're usually one bedrooms um, that literally have a, a cubicle bathroom might have a, a shower head. You can also use um, solar panels. I've seen that used before. And also there are contracts where the government does want people, they're trying to encourage people to use solar panels because the energy that you store from the solar panels, you can sell that back to the city. 
Yeah, yeah they all have to And um, I, I listened to a podcast the other day, and they talked about how so many crises in America are crises of housing issues. And some people are finding creative and affordable ways to overcome these housing issues. And I think tiny houses are one of them. It is. It actually, um, the reason, the one th- thing about those tiny houses, one, they would probably cut down on the use of, you know, eco, eco environment. Two, not as much property would have to be destroyed. And also it is possible some of these houses are movable. So um, if you have the right people, the right team, they can also, you know, um, detach your house depending on how you had it set up and they literally can have it move somewhere else. So if you say, hey, I want to move my house to another area, then yes, you could. You can literally have it hitched up, put on the back of a truck and moved. Yeah, when I was out in Las Vegas last year, they have a tiny house community somewhere close to like old Las Vegas. And I think all of those houses in that small community were all on wheels. They're all about 600 or less square feet. They Just like you said, BMC, they all had one one bedroom is usually a loft kind of situation and limited plumbing, but the solar panels are definitely something that they were they're trying to encourage. Wow. See, I didn't know that. Hold on. Let's take a look at this. I, I lived in Las Vegas for, oh, by the way, Kenna Williams said this is good info. In her former career, you had to confess things that you had done so that if anyone tried to extort you for what you did, they couldn't because the job already knew your dirt. I want to show you guys a couple of things real quick. Let's see. How come I can't find? Here. Let's see. Let me see your tissue. Oh, okay. For the people who don't know, when I talk about Kenna, I want to show you who she is real quick so that you can know this. Again, this is one of the people that I can put my name on and endorse. Kenna Williams travels the world and takes people with her. She is amazing. I want everybody to go by Kenna L. Williams, LLC, and take a look. I still don't like that picture. She showed me that picture when it was still in its beta testing phase. I think it makes you look like a demon who is going to chew off your face if you go to sleep in the hotel next to her. <laughs> Having said that, I endorse everything else. Don't get too close to the edge. I don't. Mm. Mm. Not. Do not get close to the edge. I'm not going to tell y'all. And before, hey, hey, and, and her many careers, look at that. Kenna was a mystery shopper. Mm-hmm. Let's look at these Las Vegas tiny houses because this community must have popped up after I left. Wow. Wow, yeah. Yep, told you. They're like literally, some of these houses can fit into a house. Well, a lot of them can. And they're very mobile. Wow. Very mobile. Now, and Las Vegas is one of those places that it just makes sense. I've, I've lived there for many years. Ooh, I like this one. Look at that. Fish. Yep. Yeah, that was. I said that. They're very, they're very, they're very eco-friendly. Now, only downside is like if a storm like I live on the east coast so for a storm a hurricane those homes they easily can be picked up you hear me so we do have it where sometimes they have they that's why they're um they're move, mo- mobile where they can be moved but depending on the area you know what I'm saying if something happens you know you can insure it. You can insure. It. I do know somebody who put like, I think one hundred fifty thousand dollar insurance on their on their tiny home, and they're very new. It's just that people like space, 
and those homes are very mobile mobile uh you can probably have one built um for a good pretty decent price uh the house that the houses that um we've been doing and um that our family's been doing we've probably been doing them for like about five years but that's the difference between ours and the tiny homes is uh actually I can actually funny enough we actually have one in the backyard that's being built right now. Somebody actually's um contracting us to build one. So it's just that these things can be picked up or uh they easily knocked over by a certain type of like air bursts. Well, no in Las Vegas, they don't have um they don't have um how would I put it? They, yeah. yeah. We don't. It just doesn't. This doesn't work that way in Las Vegas. There are no storm. No storm. Do they have, don't they have forest fires over there? Well, that's an interesting thing. They had a couple of fires that were set by the government a while back that everybody still still remembers. <laughs> and um, no, I mean for the most part, anything that's going to happen there happens um, because of the dryness. Yes. Yeah. And that's that's like I said. I encourage you if you. I mean, if you're a single person, and you pretty much, I know a tractor trailer driver. He has a tiny home. It's literally on the back of his goddamn truck, and when he wants to hitch it down, he hitches it down. You can do that. You know what I'm saying? I think he has a porter john that he has to empty out. But other than that, hey, it's his home. His home Look goes wherever. He now look at look at what I just saw. I went to Amazon.com. You can buy a tiny house. That's ten grand right there. Yep. You can just buy one. You can buy plans. <laughs> if you have property, now I'm gonna give y'all a little Shark Tank. Let's do a little Shark Tank, but you know, title shoes correctly. Um. Uh. If you, if you literally um, have the land, and you got the capital, you can go. Buy some tiny homes and put them down and make your own little community. Mm. There you go. You're welcome, guys. BMT just gave y'all a shark tank you, you idea. You know what? We cannot keep giving it all. We can't keep giving them all the candy for free. You know, we're gonna have to start doing Patreon. Hey, let me know. You already know how me you always because we do a, you know the thing funny about it, you stuff? The stuff that we teach it, that we teach and talk about, literally we had to pay for. And I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not, and that's not going to be rude, but a lot of the stuff, knowledge is never holistically free. It is free, but at a certain level, you start paying for it at, at a certain rate. That's why we talked about the apprentice and the master. You know, mm. the apprentice has to give something to the master for the master to want to take on the apprentice. Yeah. So, Look at this house. Look at this. Oh, I've seen my friend, he builds those very very much so. And if I'm looking at it correctly, yep. Yep. Are those are containers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those are containers. Those are containers. My friend builds living those. Container. You can have your living area, your living room area, uh, or sleeping area upstairs. Downstairs, you can have a living room area, and a, you can actually have an in-house gym. I mean, that's how I think about it. Man. Yeah. All right, y'all. We're turning back. Hey, listen. Um, I make fun of Kira, but she knows I love her. Um, and we 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 got to go. Thank you both, and thank you for everybody. Thank you to everyone who have hopped in. I want to make sure I can't stress this enough. The thing that's helped us to grow so much is everybody has been sharing. Everyone here has shared this on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter somewhere. And the other huge and important thing. Everyone, please click subscribe. Um, I'll be back soon with some other things. Thank you all so much. I hope everybody has a, a great day. And you guys can stay behind the curtain. I've got to go for everybody else. Hope everybody is having a great end of the weekend. Or for some of you, you're still on the weekend party mode. And you're going to watch this later. Bye-bye. See you guys. Bye.